We're going to look at the Chopin Sostenuto in E flat, which is the B1 piece from the grade 5 uh, list. And I think it's first of all, it's a great thing to have uh, a piece of Chopin that's accessible to this level. Um, most of Chopin's music is too difficult for your average um, elementary player, elementary intermediate player. So to have something like this is really wonderful. And I'm sure it's going to be an extremely popular choice. Now, Sostenuto, you'll sometimes see it referred to as waltz in E-flat, because actually Chopin didn't leave it any title. Um, it was found in a scrapbook belonging to one of his friends, and um, he just left it uh, no title, there's no dynamic markings in there. So we had to decide whether we feel it as a waltz, or whether we feel it a little slower. If we feel it like a waltz, we, we'd play it a little differently. <laughs> Sorry, I should have played an E flat there. What I'm trying to do there is to, to feel the kind of the one, two, three, one, two, three underneath. In other words, to make it a little bit more rhythmic, a little bit more dancey. But if I saw it as, let's say, a kind of a nocturne, my tempo could be a bit slower and I might uh, bring out more the melodic aspect of it. Either way would be fine. So this is, this is the alternative. shaping it a little differently, um, I would suggest you try both ways and see which way suits you better. Uh, let's just look at a few of the um, qualities of the piece, uh, what we have to be aware of when we play it. Well, first of all, dynamics. There are no dynamics marked, but obviously any piece of music we play, doesn't matter what period it's from, um, needs dynamics, and especially something from this period. So I would suggest Something that's vocal, something that, that would sound natural if you sung it. Maybe a mezzo forte, could even be a mezzo piano. What we want to do to make it feel vocal is to explore the size of interval. That's an ascending six. It's going to feel, uh, there's going to be a little bit of a stretch in there. If you were to sing it, you'd find out as the voice kind of lifts up. Now, the C is an interesting note, as it goes against the harmony, like a little appoggiatura. And what I'd want to do at the end of the phrase is to taper the sound off and just take a little time. And do you notice how I'm breathing with my wrist here? Uh, I don't have to let go of the keyboard. I don't have to do anything like this, nor should I, because that would disjoin my, my lines, disjoin the phrases. Release upwards, just this movement upwards. It feels lovely and it produces a lovely tapered kind of effect in, in, the, in the sound. Now the next phrase is a little longer and there's a particularly beautiful note. Well, actually there are two beautiful notes, <laughs> two that I like anyway. an E flat there. I put a fermato in, in, a, in brackets in my score. Because if you were to sing it, you'd probably want to linger a moment longer on that. And this is completely uh, natural to Chopin's style, the rubato style, the vocal style. So we want to copy a singer. I think in this piece is when we have repeated notes, 
We're going to be very careful not to let the keys up. Let me show you bar one again. In the, now, I'd like you to notice my left hand. See what I'm doing there. If I play staccato down there, do you hear how that interrupts the flow? Now here too. If you're playing on a grand piano, you can release the B flat only halfway up before you replay it. Because we want to avoid this. You hear that hiccup there? Hiccup. If you're playing on an upright piano, uh, just keep your hand very close to the keyboard. Don't release the B flat. Uh, don't let go of the key. In other words, not that. But so that you'll minimize the gap. Now, I like to put that ornament on the beat. And make it expressive. You could put it before the beat, that's fine as well, a little richer. Take your time. Now that's the same as the beginning, except that it's got a dotted rhythm. Now a D flat that takes us toward our subdominant key. It's a rather lovely moment. My second favorite note, the, the C flat, which is subdominant minor. So A flat minor, little color, it's all, all it is is a color. It darkens the color. Now we have the same arpeggio that rises up as it did before. This time it goes all the way up to a G, uh, and that's a lovely magical moment. Hold it a little longer. What I'm trying to avoid here in my melodic line is even rhythm with the quavers. In other words, something mechanical like this. Don't copy this. If you want it to sound like a robot, do it that way. If you want to make it sound like a singer, like a musician, uh, shape it, bend it a little. Start slow. Now this is a particularly problematic section, the, the sixth and third, this section at the end here, which is why I've devoted a video especially to this. So uh, you'll find that within the publication. I'll show you exactly how to practice that to make that feel uh, easy. Now the next section is where the left hand has the melodic line. Let me play it for you. I hear this as more intense. I hear this as a kind of mezzo forte. as well. It's a lovely moment that. So a little bit stronger here. Now there's a little moment here that I think people struggle with. You've got a grace note in the left hand. I suggest taking a little time over that, catching it in the pedal and putting it on the beat so that it becomes two semiquavers. Let me show you that in super slow motion from the bar before. Because what we've got here is a right hand line as well that promises to go somewhere. It wants to do that, doesn't it? And instead Chopin just leaves us hanging in mid-air. hand stronger, these bass notes, these little acciaccaturas are really a, a way of notating a bass note. It's not fast. Don't mistake it for something that moves fast. It's just a bass note out of time. In other words, no time um, connected to it. Same here. And that needs 
needs a little moment as well, a little extra time uh, to make that sound beautiful uh, rather than chaotic. See, all of this stuff uh, would sound chaotic if we hurried over it. Take your time, linger over it, and really just savour the beautiful um, Chopin style that everybody loves. I can't think of anybody in this world that doesn't love Chopin. Uh, do enjoy this piece. I think you're going to have a lot of fun with it.